Well, good morning. So exciting to be here in Brussels with all of you. Um, I'm Rebecca Radis and uh, here from Los Angeles. So the weather, a little bit different for me, um, but still, like I said, very exciting to be here within this conversation that I think is so crucial where we, every single person within this room here today has the opportunity to impact not only how uh, we view, but how we use social media as government agencies, as nonprofits, as leaders uh, throughout the world. And it's just amazing to me when you think about the huge shift we've seen in social media over the years. Um, I was thinking about, uh, we were talking last night at dinner and uh, the, the huge age range between kids that all of us had there last night. And you think about what's happened just in the last 11 years. So Pew Research in 2005 started uh, to really track um, social networks and the advancement of social networks and how many people were actively using Facebook and Twitter uh, and those social networks that we had at the time. And you think just 11 years ago, AOL and dial-up were what we were dealing with. How many people remember dial-up? Anybody? Okay, I'm not alone. All right, I'm not dating myself too bad. But it, consider the fact that there's a whole generation of kids that will never know the pain of having to deal with a dial-up connection. There's a whole group of people that have never had to literally throw the kids in the car, you could go to have breakfast with the family, come back and still Eh, 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 deal with trying to get into the World Wide Web. Well, so much has evolved and so much has shifted in the sense of the opportunities that we have to connect, to collaborate, to engage our audience and our community in a way that we just never ever thought possible and never had that chance before. But of course, with that opportunity also comes unique challenges. There's more risk and more reward with social media than ever before as well. So today what we're gonna talk about is your social media strategy, whether you uh, have been at it for quite some time, whether you're looking to reignite your social strategy, maybe take a little step back and identify what you could do a little different, maybe a little bit better. We're gonna go through uh, a pretty quick and easy checklist of the top 10 things that you can do today to immediately improve uh, your results, no matter whether, as I said, you're just getting started or you would like to find new ways to connect and interact with your exact audience. There we go. So, it, you know, as I said, so much has evolved and you look back, um, 1995, where we were with social media all the way to 2005. Uh, and in 2005, only 7% of adults were using social networks. And you fast forward to today in 2016, where 65% of adults are now active on social networks. And in fact, 64% of users on Facebook log in every single day. Now, some of us probably a little bit more than others. Um, but again, unique opportunities for us to find that exact right audience, to share that exact right content with them, and to get into a, a situation where we're having a conversation with that audience to where they're connecting with us, where we would not have been able to do previously or otherwise. All right, so let's start with step one. Review your current use of social media. This might seem pretty basic, uh, but believe it or not, so many jumped into social media or have gotten into social media without actually thinking about the reasons behind 
important. Social media, and I often say you can't use social media until you know what you want to get out of it. Um, and so, you know, often we started with maybe the big boy on the block, it was Facebook, and we jumped in, uh, wanted to test the waters and see if uh, Facebook was gonna be the right place for us. We started maybe over on Twitter, jumped into Instagram, and before we knew it, we were posting, but were we posting with a purpose? Did we actually have a strategy behind the content that we were sharing? And that's really where this first uh, number one step comes in, where we're going to take a look at what are all of those channels that you're using, and are they serving the same purpose today that they were serving way back when you started? Uh, hard to believe that maybe Facebook no longer serves a purpose for you, or Twitter no longer serves a purpose, but you do need to look at those channels. Take a look at your engagement over there. Are you getting likes? Are you getting shares? Are you getting comments? Are people actually interested in the content that you're sharing? And once you take a look at that engagement, now take a look at the growth. Have you grown within the last three months, six months, maybe the last year? Is your content uh, pretty stagnant where you're hard pressed to get anybody but your mom to actually like your content? And then frequency. Look at your frequency. How often are you sharing content? Are you committed to consistently sharing every day, every hour, every two hours, however often it is on each of those social networks? It's a really good idea to take a look at those within your space. How often are they sharing? And is their content actually making a connection? Is their audience interested? Are they talking about that content? And then finally, traffic. Are you seeing any uh, interaction from those social networks over to your websites, over to any other uh, web-driven based site that you'd like them to take action on. Are they clicking over there? Are they reading it? Are, are they actually sharing your content with their audience? One of my favorite tools, and this is uh, you know, just an easy little tool for you to really set a baseline, kind of gauge where you're at with your Facebook page. It's like Elizer, like Elizer.com. You can run your page, you can actually run anybody's page. So another great way to set that baseline based off of maybe some others uh, around you that you've been paying attention to their Facebook content and you're thinking, wow, they are crushing it. They are doing a phenomenal job. So what Likealizer does is it takes a Facebook page, runs it through their algorithm, and takes a look at how well your page is actually performing. And based off of that, it gives you a score. We're probably, none of us are type A's within this room, so not interested in that score of one to 100, actually getting 100. <laughs> but it does make it very easy for you to take a look at what could I be doing better? What could I change? What could I tweak just a little bit? So I just took the city of Brussels and ran it through like Eliza, and they got a 77 out of 100. Very high, very strong performance. And you can see here that you get a little green check mark for, you know, hooray, you did a great job, down to uh, X marks a spot where you could fix a few things. So take a look at that. Run your Facebook page. You might be surprised at how well you're performing in comparison to maybe what your perception was. And then also look at those around you. You can see uh, right within Likealizer uh, other pages that are within your space that are ranked the highest. So you could take a look at how, how well, you know, is my content performing at this particular time as opposed to another page. And it gives you a very good idea, a very good sense of where you, where you could definitely start to see some improvement. And then look to your analytics. We have so many free tools available to us that pretty much give you everything you ever needed to know about your social media performance. So of course, you have your Google Analytics, uh, Facebook Insights, you have Twitter Analytics, you have Pinterest Analytics. How many people are actually using Pinterest at this point? Just a few, okay, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I love Pinterest and it's such a great opportunity if you're uh, utilizing visual marketing, which we'll talk a little bit about 
Uh, Pinterest gives you just that, that chance to connect with a completely different audience, an audience that's looking for something that they're probably not finding on a Facebook or Twitter. So take a look at your analytics. Your analytics are, are going to give you details about the time of day, your demographics. Is this the exact person you thought you were attracting or you were connecting? Again, these might be a little bit surprising for you when you thought you were connecting with 35-year-old women and it's 45 to 55. And as you can imagine, that's going to that's gonna change your content a bit as well, dependent on who you're actually looking to connect with. Another free tool, uh, our friends over at Simply Measured, um, they have about 20 different reports that you can run every single one of your social networks through to see exactly how they're performing. So if you are on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or YouTube, any of those, you can run that through, get all of the data on your most recent content, your top performing content, uh, how well your audience is interacting, and then also also see your top engagers. And your top engagers is another way for you to get interactive with those people that are actually interactive with you. So getting out there and telling them thank you, responding to their shares of your content. So now once you've identified all of those channels, where you should be, what exactly you might be able to fix, you want to optimize your social networks. And this is another opportunity I think that's overlooked where you can go back in and really ensure that as people are searching for you, they're using specific keywords, maybe hashtags that uh, are, are, should be synonymous with you that they're able to find you. So a couple of tips for you on how to optimize your social networks. First of all, you're optimizing for your audience. So look at the type of content you're sharing, what time you're sharing it at. Are you sharing content for the audience you think you have or the audience you actually have? And that's where those analytics come in. That's where really culling through that data will help you see, am I talking with the exact right community that I'm hoping to connect with? Because when you really get the chance to dive in, know who those people are, all of a sudden you can have uh, that conversation with the exact right people that have been out there. They've been searching, uh, looking for your education, looking for you as a resource, uh, and hoping to find that exact content. So once you make that shift, once you actually start talking with the exact right audience, it becomes much easier to craft that message. Because I think we all know at this point that it's not enough to just share any type of content. You have to share the right content, the content your audience is looking for. A one size fits all strategy or a strategy that's looking to cast as wide a possible net. Well, unfortunately, you're speaking to absolutely nobody. And there's a good chance that there's an audience out there dying to hear your message. Problem is, they're not listening to you, um, but they're looking and listening to those out there within your space that have a customized message. They've really figured out who that person is that they're speaking with, and they speak their language day in and day out. Um, so it's not a one-size-fits-all strategy that maybe you started out with, maybe it was a little broad, but now you're able to really start streamlining, streamlining that and narrowing that down. And then tapping into the struggles. So what is the challenge? What is that pain point that they're dealing with? And how can you uh, be the problem solver? How can you be the solution that they don't need to go anywhere else to get the answers? They don't need to look to anybody else on any other day. They just know, and you can start to train them to come back day in and day out. Find your content and know that everything they ever needed to know they're going to find right there, and they're going to find it in a matter of moments. It's going to be really easy for them to scroll through your page, your news feed, your Twitter feed, whatever the case might be, grab what they need and go, or retweet or maybe reshare that content. 
And then customizing, as we talked about. So customizing not only your social media strategy and your message, but all of the content that goes along with that. So truly creating uh, that, that customized experience to where your audience knows what they're going to get. There's no question in their mind as to when they land on Twitter uh, exactly what type of content they're going to be able to find. And if they're in need of something in particular, they know that you're the resource that's going to be able to provide it. And then from there, we're going to identify specific goals. Yet another area where we see a big disconnect, a disconnect from the top all the way down. Believe it or not, um, there are a lot of different ideas of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, in a recent survey, it was found that 61% of communication directors said that brand awareness was their top priority. It was the most important goal when it came to social media. Unfortunately, their team was not in alignment. So executive director said engaging the community was most important to them. And then development director said education and training. So it's incredibly critical that you uh, and your team get aligned in what you're looking to achieve, in how you're using each of those different social networks. So it's aligning your team with the goals of, uh, with the goals of your social media strategy, um, but also with your target audience. So taking everything that we've talked about so far and weaving it together into a scenario area where you're all working towards the exact same thing, every bit of content that you put out there rolls up into that particular goal, and then you have a system in place, and we'll talk a little bit about that too, where it becomes effortless to send out that content on a daily basis. So first of all, determine. Determine what it is that you want to achieve. Is it that increased awareness? Do you simply want to get your name out there in the market? Is it engaging your community? Is this just another way for you to be able to interact, have that conversation, go a little bit deeper with your audience? Maybe it's to build thought leadership, maybe it's to build trust and rapport, or maybe it's just that expanded reach into a market that maybe you wouldn't have been able to tap into otherwise. So once you've figured out exactly what you're looking to achieve, now you move into your content strategy. So if you haven't sat down and you haven't actually figured out, what are we sharing? What are we sharing today? Is it hitting the mark? Are we looking at those analytics and determining whether or not people actually care about our content? And so often um, I'm asked, uh, you know, Rebecca, I just can't figure out. I can't gain traction on Twitter. I can't get anybody to actually like or comment uh, on my content on Facebook. And many times, uh, there's, there's several different situations going on there where you haven't taken the time to get to know your audience. Uh, you haven't checked in a really long time whether or not they care uh, about your content. And then you haven't looked to see what time they're actually on. I think we make that assumption many times that because these are the normal hours of our day, that that's the normal hours that our audience is online and consuming our content. So looking at your analytics, identifying what time are they online and what time should I be sharing that content is going to help you as you think about crafting that content strategy. So a content strategy is similar to that social media strategy a lot of times is an afterthought where we're just pushing out content, we're testing out the waters, we're taking a look at uh, what, uh, what's working, what's not, but we haven't come back and actually put together a robust content strategy. So 90% of uh, consumers say these days that they find custom content 
content very useful. So content that's specifically designed with them in mind. And then 78% believe that organizations just like yourself that are creating customized content actually care about them. They actually want to create a relationship. Rather than just pushing out content, we're creating that custom content with that specific audience and target market in mind. So I, I, I am the uh, chief marketing officer for uh, a social media management tool called Post Planner. I'm doing a shameless plug here where you can curate the best content and you really want to find that perfect mix of content as you're sharing content. You want that balance of entertaining, educational. You want that content that tells a story uh, about your organization. You want content that touches on all of those different emotions that are going to keep people coming back for more. So some of my favorite tools to curate some of that great content, top news, what's going on in the world, uh, is BuzzSumo. Post Planner, as I mentioned. Uh, Medium is a fantastic resource. If you haven't spent much time over on uh, Medium, it's a blogging resource where uh, just voices from any sector, uh, any country are talking about just about anything you could ever think about. Uh, Biz Sugar, another fantastic resource for uh, a lot of social media news. So if you're looking to keep up with what's happening within social media, another great resource. Um, visual content, I don't think it's any surprise to any of us at this point, the enormous power that visual content has to connect our audience um, and, and allow them to consume content in a very different way. So as I said, you wanna find that perfect mix. And while that perfect mix is uh, various different pieces of content, so types of content, it's also different types of media. So not just text-based, um, but also visual, so graphics, uh, video, which I know we've already talked a little bit about here today, uh, talking about live streaming video, so Facebook Live, and incorporating all of those different mediums that we have available to us. And when you look at the statistics and the data, uh, visual marketing has really taken on a life of its own and it can do the same thing for your content. So 63% of all social media content these days now includes an image. Uh, content with an image receives over 94% more views. I don't think that's a number you can overlook. And 60% of people interact with an organization whose images appear within a search, so a Google search. So really important that you're creating a visual content that can be found, that when they're searching for it, uh, they're finding those graphics that you're sharing, whether uh, it's something from one of uh, an event such as this. Uh, I've already seen so many of those being tweeted out, or maybe it's a, a piece of content that was written and now you've repurposed it into a visual piece of content. And now that you've got this content strategy, this social media strategy that you're starting to work through in place, the important part is to put a system uh, in place so that it makes it very easy for you to keep up, so that you're consistent in all that you're sharing. And automation, uh, it has become a bit of a dirty word in social media, but I am here to tell you I am a huge proponent of automation and moderation. So really using it to support everything else that you're doing. So use automation to plan ahead, to have a content calendar where you know what you're going to post today, tomorrow, next week, and you can get that into a tool where uh, it's auto-posting on your behalf. And then use that time, that freed up time to come in and interact, say thank you, have a conversation with those that are actually out there uh, inspired to react. And to comment on your content. You can use it to schedule ahead for holidays, or you can use it, use it just to listen. There's absolutely nothing wrong to do a little eavesdropping on social media uh, and listen to what's being said about you and then be able to react in real time. 
Next up is empowering your team. So now that you're in alignment on what you're trying to achieve, you need to actually give your team the ability to get out there uh, and advocate on your behalf, to be able to talk about what it is you're sharing across social media. So first of all, communication. Communication is where you are discussing who you're trying to reach and exactly how each of your social networks is enabling you to do that. Uh, next is education. So educating your team around how you're using each individual social network. So what are you doing on Facebook that's a little bit different on Twitter, that's a, a little bit different over on Instagram or Snapchat or any of the other social networks that you might find yourself on? And then building a specialized team that is empowered to get out there uh, and talk about what's going on within your organization. Talk about those things that are important to your community that they want to know about, but maybe you haven't had that plan in place to be able to do that in an effective and an efficient manner. And then promoting, engaging, and interacting. So this one, as you can imagine, this is where the real magic really begins within social media. When you start to get interactive, this is where you're cultivating that community. This is where you're engaging that community uh, and no longer having that, that one-to-many conversation. It's those one-on-one -on -one conversations that really take your social media growth, your engagement to a whole different level. And 56% of organizations, unfortunately, are still, still flying by the seat of their pants when it comes to no promotional plan in place. So what does that mean? What does that actually look like? Well, you share one type of content and that's it. You've never shared it again. It just kind of goes off into the oblivion. And unfortunately, you're not resharing that over and over, putting it into a system so that uh, another group of people is able to see that piece of content. And that's really where automation comes in incredibly handy as well. So three important components to uh, the interaction and the promotion is a content calendar, as I mentioned. So if you're not getting ahead, um, I would highly suggest you can start slow, start small. You know, do the next 30 days. Take a look at every event you have coming up, everything that uh, is important to you as an organization, and write that down. Start to drop that into a calendar, and then think about those types of uh, content that media? Could you uh, maybe create a video around it? Could you do a live stream around it? Could you create a graphic, maybe an infographic that would highlight that content and uh, put it into a, a different format that might be more appealing to a wider audience? And as I said, look at those types of content that you want to share and then schedule in your response time. I cannot uh, state this strongly enough where if uh, you're saying to yourself, but I don't have time. You know, I barely have time to share the content I'm sharing. Well, you do. You have five minutes in your day. I absolutely guarantee it. You just need to put it into your cal calendar and stick with it like any other meeting. And I know none of us have enough meetings, right, within our days? But five minutes, you can do it at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, just pop in, say hello, how's it going, um, share a little bit something that, uh, you know, maybe went on within your day, something behind the scenes that would encourage more interaction. But scheduling it in your calendar is going to make it a date, uh, and a date within your mind so that you stick with it. And then following the golden rules, there's uh, definitely some golden rules to social media, and I don't care what industry I'm talking with. Um, you know, for the most part, I live in the tech world, so I talk uh, a lot with uh, technology companies, but uh, I have seen over the years that no matter the market, no matter the space, the golden rules are all the same, and they're very similar to those golden rules, you know, that we, we follow in life as well. So listening. Listening is so important. Rather than being the one that's just talking at your audience all the time, listen to what your audience is talking about and then be responsive to those needs. 
telling your story, it's, uh, it's very interesting to see how stories impact the way uh, content not only resonates with us, but how it remains with us. So it was found that uh, if you were to tell a story to your audience, you actually activate seven different areas of the brain. Whereas, if I just stood up here and gave you data and statistics all day long, slide after slide after slide, um, I would only activate two different areas of your brain. So you'd probably walk away retaining quite a bit less than you would actually retain um, if you told your audience a whole lot more stories. And I know it can be scary to tell stories sometimes, but uh, every company, every organization has stories that bind, that connect, and that really allow us uh, to share in a lot bigger and greater way than just simply pushing out that content. And then staying consistent, maintaining a focus on those goals, creating that experience, uh, and then it should seem as a no-brainer, but uh, being social. Social is, uh, after all, you know, the number one goal within social media is to uh, stay in that, actively within that conversation that's happening around us. And then mixing it up, um, as we talked about just a little bit, uh, changing it up, never being afraid to test, 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 uh, and then creating that experience that makes it like Christmas for your audience every single day where it's just this big, beautiful um, uh, present that they get to unwrap from you and they know that they're going to be excited. They're like kids, you know, around the Christmas tree um, at that time of the year because you've done such a great job in listening and responding to their needs that they're getting that training that they, they wanted instead of wah, 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 tube socks, right? I don't think any of us want that. And then finally, I'll just wrap up with one of the uh, most important parts of your social media strategy is tracking, measuring, and adjusting. A successful social media strategy is an agile strategy. It's one that is able to adjust to the changes that are happening in the market. It's one that is constantly taking a look at how that content is resonating. So first of all, it's tracking. So looking at your goals, your campaigns, how are they performing? Is there something that you could be doing a little bit better? Could you tweak that content? Is there a way that you could share a different type of media that might have just done a little bit better job um, in sticking with your audience? And then measuring. So don't rely on the typical data, as I spoke about. You have so many different ways to uh, curate and call data from all of these different social media tools that there's really no excuse in 2016 going into 2017 to not be data informed in the decisions that we're making. And then testing every entry point. So where are people connecting with you? Where are they coming from? And then how how are they moving off of Facebook? Where are they going to? What are they clicking through to? And what's that next action step that they're taking with you? And then never being afraid to adjust. That's the beauty in social media is we, uh, we do have that chance to write that ship very quickly as opposed to the days of traditional media. So as you are looking at things and you're saying, ooh, wow, this did not go the way I thought it was going to or it didn't perform the way I did, you can turn that around. You can completely redo that, remodel it, rework it. Uh, and put it back out there in the world in a whole different new package that, uh, again, you can start all over with the tracking, the testing, um, and just reviewing on a consistent basis. So it goes back to putting a, a system in place, put that in your content calendar, make sure that you're reviewing, you're adjusting, and you're tracking. So thank you to all of you for having me here. So excited to be here with you today. Um, I would love to connect with you across social media. Um, I also have all of my slides available to you so that you can um, effectively just test, test, test everything that you're doing out there, checking your social channels, making sure that all of your content is encouraging the type of engagement that you're looking for, and knowing that social media can be fun 
It can be engaging, entertaining, but it can also be incredibly fruitful when you have a plan in place. So thank you to all, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, really, instantly actionable advice. Really, really solid stuff. Do we have some questions from the audience for Rebecca? Anyone? Here to the back. Yes, sir. Our friend from Romania, please. Thank you. You say adjust, adjust your content to your audience, but what if um, you want to transmit something else other than the audience actually wants you to transmit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you want to push some more serious content and they are interested only in getting, well, I don't know, you can imagine whatever they, they want to Cute and fuzzy forget. bunnies. So you, you, still, you still adjust your content or you try to push some of you, what your serious content, what, the serious content you want to push or how do you do it? Well, I, uh, I think that's a terrific question, and I think it goes back to um, a couple of different things. Have you cultivated a community that's not really the community you wanted to connect with? And that happens a lot, um, believe it or not, where you start off with one objective, um, things change, and with that, your audience changes. Um, and so you do need to test the waters, but it also needs to be beneficial to you as well. So if it, there is more serious content that you need to get out there, um, you need to find that healthy balance of both promotional as well as engaging. Um, it shouldn't all be um, the, the cat gifts or the fuzzy bunnies. <laughs> um, it does need to be that informational, that educational content. So it's just, a, it's testing how, how much content is your audience willing to consume? Uh, and how much can each social network uh, uh, take as far as how much are you posting on a daily basis? And so, for example, let's say you're posting 15 times a day to Twitter. And within those, you've determined that five of them are going to be the more serious content. Now you need to figure out what are the best times for you to share that type of content. Because believe it or not, uh, your audience is going to respond differently at 5 a.m. as opposed to 5 p.m., dependent on the content. 5 a.m., they're going to work, they're thinking about you know, business focus. 5 p.m., uh, maybe they're winding down their day and they're more interested in being entertained. So that's where your analytics really come in and you need to take a look at how is that content performing overall, but also based off of the time of day that I'm sharing it. But don't be afraid to do it. Put it out there. I think we had another question in the back and we'll come to you next, sir. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, hi, Elizabeth Fry, I'm Head of Media Analysis um, down at SHAPE, our, uh, our military headquarters. Um, you mentioned at the beginning um, of your, your talk about customising your language, and I wondered to what extent you meant this literally. So at NATO, one of our priorities at the moment is messaging to our Baltic allies, um, and it often strikes me that, you know, if we're, we're trying to talk to, let's say, Estonians, and we're speaking in English, that might um, be, be quite an issue. Um, so I'm wondering what you think about posting in different languages, if that's a good idea, or conversely, whether that would actually alienate our existing um, English-speaking audience. Thanks. I love that question. Um, and the fact that you took that literally, that's terrific. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I would say absolutely yes, do it. Um, because I, I think you do have that unique opportunity to tap into every single one of those markets. Yeah, speak their language. Talk about uh, what's interesting to them, but also speak it in a way uh, that is connecting them to you as opposed to everything in English. You're not, you're not going to offend people by speaking in a different language. Um, I think, in fact, you're going to endear people more to you um, by customizing that content. So, uh, you know, while I was speaking more to customization from a messaging point of view, I think that's a wonderful idea. And time for one more question here, sir. Um, Richard Komarek from Joint Force Command, Brunson Public Affairs. Regarding Facebook in specific, um, how, what is your opinion on frequency? Is there a possibility of doing it too much, uh, or is there 
uh, possibility of uh, not receiving, if you go to a certain extent, you're not receiving as much bang for your buck uh, as in posting a little bit less? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, that's definitely a hot topic. Uh, I think for a long time there was a misconception that you could post too much uh, and really burn out your audience. And now we're seeing the complete opposite where uh, we are. You know, we're, we're an audience that has high expectations these days as to how much content is coming through our favorite pages. Um, so for you know for you depending on how much you're sharing I would start to add to that if you're feeling like you want to share more than maybe the three times a day that you're sharing push that to four push that to five um, we share 13 times a day on our Facebook page and just uh, recently we went through a case study where we grew our uh, our Facebook page by 198 percent in 12 months by testing exactly this uh, testing out how often we were sharing, but also the type of content. So this goes back to what I was talking about too, where uh, sharing just image-based uh, content as opposed to text-based, as opposed to an article link uh, or a video, all gonna perform a little bit differently, um, but also gonna perform a little bit different based off of the time. So if uh, I would never be afraid, first of all, to test the limits. Uh, your audience is going to tell you, whoa, 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 we're burnt out. Um, but uh, for the most part, with uh, the algorithm where it is today, with how uh, difficult it truly is to get there out, out there in front of your audience, what's most important is you do have that healthy mix of content. So you're taking that image, uh, images which do so well still on Facebook or video, which does exceptionally well, and you're taking that engagement and you're leveraging that, and you're building momentum and uh, pushing that into your next post, which might be a link-based post, which doesn't do as well, um, but you are going to increase engagement because now you've got yourself out there uh, in, in the newsfeed. People are actually paying attention. So pay attention to the type of content that you're sharing too, and that you're not just sharing all one type of content, you're changing it up and then looking at those analytics as to how people are responding to it. Super.